G'day, v Doug here, and how you doing? Today's video is part two in the turbo motor series. So in the last video building the turbo motor, we finished up with the long block. And moving into this one, we're going to carry on with finishing off the motor. So the next step was to add the fan shroud and the cylinder covers that are from SCAT and they powder coated. And I just went for the original black, which is similar to the original VW motors. This next shot, you'll see an extra plate that's been inserted uh, inside the fringe shroud and it's really to force the air over the fins and to stop air escaping from around the inlet manifold and the spark plug. So just more efficiency in cooling and less air escaping. The next shot is just uh, sealing up the fan shroud against the cylinder covers and this is again just to ensure that all the air that's being pushed by the fan is actually going over the cylinders and cooling rather than escaping through all the gaps. And last of all is the fans are welded up. This is just to give them extra strength so that the fan won't fall apart while it's spinning if revs are slightly higher or something like that, you know that your fan will always be intact. Once again, this motor was built by AJ Sims at Low Bugget, and uh, most of these photos come from AJ, and I'll leave a link in the description below. But moving on from the air cooling tins to the inlet system. It starts off with the end castings, standard VW end castings. Because these are pressurized from the turbo, a extra section is welded on. And this is the next shot to show once they are all welded up. The ends of those castings are then matched uh, polished and ported to match the cylinder head. So that first one is just the blue ink and marking out the size. The shot is just starting to machine the one side. The shot is now the inlet manifold uh, match ported to the cylinder head and the last shot is you just see them there that they are matched to get the best amount of flow smoothest airflow less restrictions this shot is just mocking up the inlet manifold so you'll see the inlet is now bolted to the long block and the last shot is where the inlet manifold comes together and goes up to the turbo. The turbo in VDUP is a TurboNetix T3, T4 hybrid. This means that the turbo has a standard T3 turbine component, but is combined with a slightly larger T4 compressor to produce great horsepower, but it's got a quicker response time. So this first shot is just the turbo out of the box. Just looking at the compressor wheel, so this is the inlet side, sometimes referred to as the cold side. This is the middle of the turbo where the bearings are and there's actually an oil fitting at the top and the bottom. So oil is constantly pumped through this section. This is the bearings in the shaft and Turbonetics turbines use a larger shaft than most other turbines which uh, proves to be more reliable on the turbo, particularly under high pressures. The next shot is the hot side or the 
turbine side. This is the side that's spun by the exhaust gas. The next shot is the oil fitting. That's just uh, comes from the oil pump and the turbo is constantly fed oil otherwise it'll overheat very quickly and this shot is the fuel pump is replaced with a blank flange and that flange is fitted with a oil fitting so the turbo can drain the oil from the turbo can drain back into the sump the wastegate on the VW turbo motor is a Turbonetics Evolution 38mm wastegate and controls the turbocharger boost by bypassing the turbine inlet gas flow in response to an actuator spring load and this controls the boost level. The actuator section is fitted with sensing ports on both sides of the diaphragm and this allows precise control of the valve motion. This also allows you to use an external boost controller, which means you can adjust your turbo boost on the move. The Evolution comes standard with different springs, and so you can adjust the wastegate pressure from 5 to 35 psi just by changing the actuator springs to increase the boost pressure to suit any application. So the same motor can go from a street motor to a drag racer just by changing the actuator springs and in increasing the boost pressure from the turbo. v has been fitted with a TP500 Holly carb and the TP just stands for turbo prepped carburetor. This shot just shows the TP500 um, on a inlet manifold with the silicon hose and clamps. This shot shows a TP500 on the left. In the middle is a four barrel TPHP450 and on the right is a TP350. So the numbers refer to a CFM or cubic feet per minute and is a measure of the airflow through the carb. So the higher the airflow, obviously higher fuel means more power. So the carb I have is the TP500, which is the one right on the left. The 350, which is the little one on the right, is good for about 225 horsepower. The TP500 is up to about 300 horsepower. That's the one on v -dubbed. And the one in the middle is up to about 540 horsepower. So that's the big boy. All the carbs come with a Percy adjuster jet, which is that purple strip you see. You no longer have to change the main jets. Uh, you don't have to open up the carb to change jets. You just turn the main screw that's located on the top of the carb and you can adjust the carb from rich to lean as you want with infinite amount of adjustment. This last shot is just really a close-up of the carb showing the Percy adjusted jet. So we have air from the turbo, we have fuel from the carb and now we need spark. So the ignition of v -dubbed is made up of a 009 distributor with a large sweep rotor and the distributor has had the advanced locked out and this is for use with the turbo motor. The distributor cap is a Bosch cap and it has brass terminals. The timing is achieved with a low bucket crank trigger system with pointless ignition from CompuFire. And this provides a precise and extremely accurate timing, which is ideal for turbo cars, as timing flutter is related to the slop and excessive play from brass distributor drive gears, uh, steel distributor drive pinions, the keyway wear on the distributor, bushings that are worn on distributors, and inaccuracy in advance weights. This system works by installing a magnet in a scat billet pulley 
and the magnet is read by a magnetic pickup on the crank trigger system and that sends a signal to the coil um, which achieves uh, precise timing and the timing is taken off the angle of the crankshaft rather than all the way up through the distributor and wearables. So why do you want more accurate timing? Well, the more accurate the timing and the more precise the timing is, the less fluctuation you have in the firing of the cylinders. So there's less buildup of excessive heat, there's less chance of detonation, therefore there's less wear on rods and less chance of bearing failure, and also it helps to avoid poor idling. So the last bit of the motor build is the exhaust. Now for a normal car that's not very exciting, but with a turbo, the exhaust is what actually drives the turbine side of the turbo. So this first shot is just mocking up the exhaust. The next one is from the collector up to the turbo, as well as the wastegate. The next shot is just mocking up the pipe from the hot side of the turbo down and the last shot is just the dump pipe out. So now with the motor complete, the exhaust is ceramic coated and in that polished chrome finish and the motor is now being assembled. The motor was run on a dyno to tune it properly and basically run it in and check that there are no issues with the motor. It was then packed up um, to send to me in Perth and with it I ordered a, a freeway flyer transmission. And the last shot there is the crate that was shipped from California to Perth here in Australia. Thanks for watching and take care. Thanks again for watching and be sure to like, share, subscribe and leave me any comments.